So it's almost Christmas and my peach tree still has leaves. Does it matter? Let's talk about that next. Hi everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today actually on Christmas weekend of 2017. So uh, one of the things for us here in Arizona and I know also a few other places across the country face it as well is we have deciduous trees that do a great job. We get low chill varieties, um, but at the same time, sometimes they don't lose their leaves or they lose their leaves really, really late and it doesn't matter. So um, what's behind me is one of our peach trees. We have six peach trees here on the farm. This particular one is our desert gold peach tree. Um, it's almost three years old, uh, so it's, um, it's produced well for us. We've got a couple great crops off of it. Um, we actually use these peaches. They're a little more bitter tasting, kind of a bitter aftertaste to them, uh, as opposed to some of our other peach varieties here on the farm. So we actually use this one as um, in our smoothies. We freeze them and we use them that way. Uh, but very, very productive. It produces a tremendous amount of fruit. We get a couple, probably three or four, five gallon bucket fulls of peaches. Uh, they're all ripe at the end of May is usually when they're ripe. But we're here in the winter time and what we want to talk about today is uh, chill hours with trees and what are some ways that you can increase the chill hours. So with deciduous fruit trees, and deciduous meaning they lose their leaves, uh, with deciduous fruit trees um, they generally require chill hours and chill hours are basically temperatures below 45 degrees and they need to clock a certain amount of hours um, during the winter time. So here in Arizona, uh, particularly out in Whitman, we're a few degrees cooler than they are in town in Phoenix, um, but we are kind of challenged when it comes to chill hours. And we get our chill hours late. Um, usually it's in December, January, and then into February. Um, so it's a very, very short window of chill hours. So number one, we choose varieties um, that are lower in chill hour requirements. So for example, the desert gold peach tree behind me needs a couple hundred hours of chill hours. I think it's somewhere between 200 and 300 hours of chill hours. So that's still a lot for us. And we probably max out at about 300 or so hours um, in any given winter. And of course that'll vary from winter to winter. Uh, but the, so variety is number one. So you wanna make sure you're choosing varieties that are gonna meet your chill hours or your environment is gonna meet the chill hour requirement for that tree. So in this case with the des desert gold, it's pretty good. It's kind of right in that range. Um, and then of course, what we want to do is kind of position the tree and place it uh, where in that yard in the microclimate. So in other words, the temperature around this tree here, uh, will it help to meet that? So a couple things when we designed our orchard, because a lot of most of our trees are deciduous trees. When we designed the orchard, we wanted to make sure that we kept it in a place on the property where it would help maximize those chill hours. So placement is key as well. So we're a good oh, 12 or 15 feet away from a block fence there. Um, and then it's quite a ways away from the house. So it's kind of out here, um, right in the middle of the yard. Um, so nothing really to protect it as far as uh, protection from the cold, which is exactly what we want. So that's number two. Number three, um, so we talked a little bit about choosing the right variety, putting them in the right, right, right place. And then of course we can't control the weather. Um, so, you know, that just happens. Either it's a good cold winter or it's not. Um, so even if it's not, we still get chill hours here, but we can be challenged with it. And we're finding that this year. Um, in fact, we didn't get down below freezing until just this last week. Um, we had a couple nights dip into the high 30s, uh, but we finally got some nice cold temperatures this week. So what Lori and I have been doing is we've been going through to our deciduous trees and we're actually pulling the leaves off the trees. So that's a third way, um, especially if you're in an area where you receive low chill hours, a third way where you can really maximize the amount of chill hours on your trees. So what we do with uh, peach trees, so this is a peach tree. Um, so peach trees are easy to strip as far as stripping the leaves. Um, so we're gonna show you that here in just a second. Um, but why do it and does it make a difference? Uh, well, I've read different things. So I've read different studies that say, yes, it can make a difference. No, it probably doesn't make a big difference. Um, so for me, what I, how I feel about it is, hey, if I'm gonna miss my chill hours by a few hours and I can do something about it, I'm gonna do that because I want the most production out of my trees possible. Um, I want this to produce a lot of peaches for me. So, um, so ultimately that's what we're gonna do is strip these leaves. So you know, when you think about it, um, it does make sense because right now this tree, it's Christmas weekend, it's Christmas in a couple days, uh, and we still, have we still have leaves on this tree. And even though we've gotten down into the high 20s uh, a couple nights ago, down into the low 30s last night, this tree still is hanging on, it's still got leaves. And one of the things that you'll notice when you get um, dew on the ground and it freezes, you know, you get that frost on the ground. Uh, one of the things, if you take a peek at your trees that are like this, you'll see that everything around the tree, 
there's no frost there um, because this does provide some insulation uh, because you have liquid up in the trees and it's mass, it's biomass. Um, so that does create uh, some thermal uh, heat. It's very little on this, but it does, it does actually give some. And so we don't want that blanket of protection on this tree. We want to get everything off of there so the, you get, gets the maximum amount, amount of chill hours. That's our goal. So what I want to show you, if Lori wants to squeeze in here really quick, is how we deal with peach trees. Now, we have other fruiting trees here as well that are deciduous. Um, apple trees would be a great example. Um, our apple trees uh, have spurs on them, and those spurs, you don't want to break those off because those apple trees, they actually produce their fruit on spurs. So it's very important you're not breaking those off if you're going to remove the leaves. And we're not going to be showing you an apple tree today. Um, we're going to show you a peach tree just because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but one of the best things you can do or the easiest way to do this is basically just take your hand, um, put it at the bottom or where the, the small branch meets one of the main branches down here. You can see this branch has got some leaves on it. And all you do from down here forward, you just take your finger, wrap it around that little branch and just pull forward. The leaves come right off and that guy is stripped. Now, what's nice about doing that is if you, it's kind of hard to see, you can't really see the buds, but there's already buds on there for next year's leaves. And I don't want to break those buds off either. I want to make sure that this tree um, produces leaves like it's supposed to, uh, to help protect the tree uh, when it's fruiting. And then of course, once you get into summer. So we don't want to break those buds off. Um, so I try not to go the opposite direction of the leaves. I try to go with the direction of the leaves. And these are dry enough now they're coming right off so it's going to make it super simple for us uh, but that's about it so what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys a quick time lapse Lori's going to be on camera with me today so i'm super excited about that uh, but we're going to show you a quick time lapse show you um, how we take the leaves off of this tree and we'll come back to you here in just a minute Okay, so we're back and just should have seen, as long as we can get it to work right, should have seen a time lapse of us stripping this tree of its leaves. So, um, so now it's done. You can see it looks like a tree should look right before Christmas, at least a deciduous tree, uh, basically devoid of leaves. We got a few leaves right at the tips. Uh, really not too concerned about these guys and getting each one of them. I mean, the idea obviously is to not have this blanket uh, wrapping this tree and keeping the chill hours from the tree which is what we have. So, you know, obviously we talk a, a little bit about the reason why you'd want to do this. And the idea ultimately is fruit production. You know, part of that is being able to get here, in here and prune. Now, peaches are one of the rare exceptions for us. We actually com almost completely do, or I should say, we almost do all of the pruning in the summertime. So we really do have a tendency to summer prune this tree. We actually do the majority of the pruning on this tree right after we've actually taken all the fruit off the tree. So usually for this particular um, variety, that's usually around the beginning of June. So I'll come back in, uh, we'll cut it back. The reason why is peaches, unlike a lot of our other deciduous uh, fruit, peaches actually fruit on one year old wood. So this is the wood that it put on this year. And this is where we're gonna get all of our fruit off of this tree. Um, so you can see as we come back down into here, some of the older branching, tree's gonna be three years old here in another two months. Um, so, you know, we have kind of the frame of the tree um, that we've gone through and pruned out kind of in a bowl shape. Uh, we try to keep the middle of it fairly open uh, to help with uh, fruiting, or even fruiting. But one of the things that, and so again, summer pruning is really what we do as far as the fruit production, because we don't want to take a whole lot of this new branching off in the wintertime. This is where our fruit's going to be. Um, and it won't grow back until after fruit set and, and the fruit completion. So, um, so one thing we do, um, however, come through and do in the wintertime, because I'm able to see it, is come through and do some detail pruning. So like I've got this branch right here that's actually rubbing up against this one, so this branch is gonna go away. 
So what I can do now that I don't have any leaves interfering with my line of view is I can come back to this and I can do the detail pruning that I need to make sure that the tree stays healthy in through its fruit production and is able to bear as much fruit as possible uh, without hurting the tree. So now that those leaves are gone, um, I have plenty of time before we have our first bud break. Our bud break, which simply means when they start to flower, um, once they start to flower, I really don't like to touch the trees as all, at all, um, as far as any pruning is concerned. We'll get bud break on these in February. Um, so we're about ooh, a month and a half away from the bud break on this tree. Um, so over the next few weeks, I'm gonna have to make some time to get in here and get some of my cleanup pruning done on this peach tree. So you guys had an idea and uh, saw a quick glimpse of one of the ways that we help to try to increase the amount of chill hours on our deciduous trees, on our low chill deciduous trees, to try to reach that chill hour requirement to get the maximum amount of fruit production. And that's really what we're hoping for on this tree. So hopefully next time you see this tree and you see me in front of it, it's gonna be full of fruit and we can show you that as well. Um, so you can see the end result of the work that we just completed. So thank you for joining us today. And as always, this is Dwayne and Lori reminding you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.